welcome to another edition of Felix Stone Matters. I have here with me today Jamie Whittle of Whitworth Veterinary Practice. Hello, Jamie. Hi, Bonnie. Lovely to have you here. Mm. Uh, to start with, you look a little bit different to how I'd normally remember you looking. Yes. Uh, tell us a bit about the uh, fur on your face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been called quite a few things. There's uh, a lot of uh, um, people who would like it taken off. Uh, um, it's for uh, November. I'm getting a bit of a head start because I've never had a moustache before and I didn't know quite how it was going to go. And um, it's uh, to... Um, it's to raise awareness of prostate um, disease. Um, it, a charity is organising it, and uh, um, it is just a, a way of raising awareness. Yeah. Um, you mentioned to me earlier, obviously we've been having a chat, and you said people don't realise that prostate is something that also dogs need checked too as they get older. So this yeah. is something that you're sort of looking as a practice to also raise awareness of with, with your moustaches this time um, around. Yes, I think um, for a human charity is is really important these days. And I, I think a lot of people, um, a lot of men do grow moustaches or are aware of uh, the problems associated it, with it and get sponsorship and raise money that yeah. way. Uh, we're going to have two buckets at the, at the practice, one yeah. for shaving moustache off after November and one to keep it. And I'm not quite sure how long we're going to have to keep it for. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, um, uh, so we try and raise a bit of uh, money that way, yeah, and yeah. Uh, um, with dogs, um, we, uh, we don't always encourage um, uh, neutering of male dogs. Um, but those that are entire, um, uh, it's been shown that over the age of five years old, um, they can have prostate enlargement and uh, problems associated with that. So right. it's to raise awareness of that in, in, in uh, dog owners. Brilliant. So it's not just yourself growing a moustache during November. You have a colleague who's also growing one. Hence That's the right. head start, because I hear his is probably going to be more impressive than yours. That's right, yeah. Um, <laughs> so H- H- is from Spain, and uh, he, he does seem to um, grow facial hair quite a bit faster than myself. <laughs> and uh, I think he may have a slightly more of a stylish one than my bush. <laughs> <laughs> I think yours looks very English. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So people can come into the practice during November, yep. um, from now already actually, and pop money into the bucket, buckets yes. to vote whether you keep or get rid of the moustache, but you haven't actually specified for how long. Um, that could be quite I think dangerous. Keep, keep the moustaches <laughs> probably till the new year. I think till that, the new year? Yes. Wow. So. I know which bucket I'm going to come and pop some money in. <laughs> um, there's already quite a lot in there, shave off. Is there? Yes. Oh, I'm going to have to start digging out the coppers. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah. as a practice, you are always raising money for different, various different animal charities and um, trying to raise awareness. I know at Christmas and Easter you have the um, the hampers that, that you use to raise money, and there's always a box or ten on the counter ten, yeah. for people to donate to. Yeah. It's something you're all quite passionate about. I think, um, yeah, there's it? a lot of animal charities out there, and uh, uh, when people come in with their pets, uh, um, uh, they they always seem to have their favourite charity, or uh, yeah. like whether it's guide dog. Cats Protection, Blue Cross, RSPCA. There's there's lots of local ones which uh, operate around here, and uh, um, and um, loose change uh, does seem to fill the pots up very rapidly in, the, in the surgery. So yeah, yeah, yeah we're very brilliant. fortunate. Right? So we're coming up to the end of October now, and obviously that signals Halloween. Mm. What problems do you find that, that occur over this period? I know we all think about um, fireworks night, but actually Halloween itself provides problems for animals. Um. Yes, we've got um, autumn where the nights are drawing in very rapidly and it doesn't give as much time for maybe taking dogs out for a walk or maybe cats doing their normal things and they may be, I, I don't know, caught short and it getting dark and they haven't, I don't know, um, been around all their territory, um, maybe not caught as many mice as they'd normally do. Um, and um, I, I think there are sort of behavioural changes associated with that. There's the safety as well. Um, with with taking dogs for a walk at night time, um, yeah. you can get luminous vests for dogs and yeah. collars that light up, um, and so they're very important. And yeah. Uh, yeah. especially if you've only just got um, started looking after a dog, got yourself a puppy, and you want them to be yeah. safe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know a lot of collars also have luminous stitching in them as well now, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which helps with car headlights seeing them because yeah. often when you see a human you don't always see the pet next to them walking along with them That's do right. you yeah. Yeah. Um, I know another problem obviously with Halloween is, is I have one myself is the poor fated black cat yeah. um, unfortunately they seem to scare people at this time of year they do um, maybe a connection with witches and having black cats yeah. that may, I think uh, 
animal rescue rehoming centres they um, do have more black cats than other animals yeah yeah um, I don't know if that's more of a problem this time of year, but um, the Blue Cross have got a campaign at the moment for um, rehoming of kittens and a yeah, lot of them are yeah. back. So. That's sad, isn't mm. it? Yes. Um, another problem, obviously, coming up to, to fireworks, um, bonfires. Um, people need to check them before they set light to them, really, don't they? There's a particular little creature who might like to try and hide yeah. in there. The uh, hedgehog, I think. We, yeah, we recommend um, uh, ma making a bonfire uh, uh, within the, I don't know, a few hours of actually having the bonfire. Yeah. Um, it, try and um, move any other sort of uh, plants, um, animals, uh, especially like your bunny rabbits and guinea pigs, are uh, well away from it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's surprising how hot like uh, wood gets. So, yeah. Um, and, uh, um, and really sort of plan it in advance and uh, is there is there any need for it nowadays with like um, big displays big display, being shown yeah. um, uh, so, and we do it's always a big campaign at the moment to um, um, help I suppose protect dogs that, and cats that are, are frightened of fireworks yeah yeah I mean obviously fireworks night and Halloween seem to drag on now for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and you've got the mixture of strangers knocking on your door which for some dogs alone can be quite stressful you know they're pack animals they feel the need to defend their territory and their home yeah. i know mine will always bark if someone comes to the door and sort of want to know who's there mm -hmm. um, and and then with fireworks night you've got the fireworks all animals can be quite nervous about those yeah. so it's important i guess for, for owners to be aware of this and make sure they're spending enough time with their animals yeah. during those times yeah. are there any things that they can do for particularly nervous pets or um well from a, um halloween and people knocking on on your doors uh, if there is a possibility of your your animals like um escaping um and maybe during fireworks time as well they'll be um more inclined to f run off in in fright um then microchipping is a very good idea yeah. um yeah. Um, for people who don't know what microchipping is, it's a very small um, uh, microchip within a I don't know, um, sterile glass capsule um, and it's um, placed in the scruff of dogs and cats. Um, it's rec uh, scanners recognise a, a number in that and uh, that can be um, um, the, the name of the owner and the animal can be found out by phoning a, a, a central um, database yeah, um, yeah. and uh, it, it works worldwide it's a very effective way of um, 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 marking animals no need for a collar uh, yeah, which can be yeah. problematic in cats they can fall, fall off on dogs um, so um, and it like we microchip animals from when they first come into vet surgery at maybe eight weeks yeah, and that yeah. lasts for the last lifetime of the animal so I mean you often hear stories of animals who've gone missing and are found 50 60 miles away yeah. and reunited with their owners because they were microchipped right, so yeah. it is a really important thing and also on the flip side of that I guess people who find cats and dogs floating about at this time of year you know the important thing is actually to take them to a veterinary yeah. surgery and, and get get them scanned yep. because it could mean that they could be reunited with their owner a lot quicker yeah, the first thing we'll actually... do yeah the first thing we'll do if someone brings in a um, an animal that they found is is we'll run the scanner over them it takes less than a second and uh, um, it's uh, it's so satisfying and quick um, to rehome animals that way uh, yeah, reunite yeah. them with their owners and yeah. uh, um, it, it's uh, been I think microchips been around for what 15, 20 years, yeah. and uh, in some places it is compulsory. They're, they're, I think they're bringing out a law in Scotland where it's compulsory for That's pets good. to be microchipped, and mm -hmm. uh, there have been talks about it in this in mm -hmm. England as well. I mean, it's relatively inexpensive, really, yeah. when you think about you know the worth of being able to be reunited with their pet should you go. Mm -hmm. I know my cats are microchipped because cats go off and hunt anyway so they're away from the premises yep. um like you say collars aren't always a good idea for cats some cats aren't all that keen on them no they can get strung up and they can get their legs caught inside yeah, the collars yeah, and yeah. cause nasty injuries and cats do have habits of finding warm places in winter mm -hmm. to go and curl up that aren't necessarily home or you yeah. know i know once when before we moved into the area we had a cat that used to visit us regularly um, and we found out actually that belonged to someone we were able to say to them your cat comes to our house and visits us 
so that they wouldn't worry where their cat was when he, he wasn't with them. Yeah. So I guess it is information is an important thing yeah. for people, isn't yeah. it? And leaves them comfortable. Yeah. It's such a simple way of doing it. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it lasts a lifetime of the animal. And uh, um, quite often the charities, um, maybe Blue Cross or RSPCA, they have uh, microchipping um, afternoons where you can yeah. get them um, next to nothing, really. Yeah. Um, and it's not uncomfortable for the animal, really. It's literally seconds. It's almost yeah. like an injection, really, yeah. isn't it? In, in, under the back of the neck sort That's of right. thing and, and it's done and, and yeah. they forget about it so yeah. well worth it just back to the hedgehogs for a moment mm -hmm. because every year obviously people find them in their gardens or on roadsides or like we say in bonfires and everybody always fights over what do you feed a hedgehog what do you do with a hedgehog mm -hmm. if you find one what should you do with a hedgehog if you find uh, one if you actually find one and you're able to pick it up it suggests that they are quite poorly yeah. Um, um, they are wild animals and they um, have got ways of looking after themselves which um, uh, generally involves in staying well hidden during the daytime and uh, coming out at night time to uh, eat slugs and snails um, so if there's one out in the daylight it does normally suggest there's something quite um, quite um, seriously wrong with it uh, um, there's a lovely lady in Felixstowe called Nettie Trigg and uh, she um, will take in um, poorly hedgehogs and she's probably the, um, the number one guru for um, yeah. uh, hedgehog um, diseases and uh, being able to um, bring them back to life and uh, and uh, get them back into the wild uh, yeah, she will yeah. keep the, the severely um, injured ones but most of them she gets out into new gardens or, or released yeah. into the wild um, uh, so yeah, I think if you if you found one and you want to look after it until you can get it, get it to a vet or, or to Nettie Trigg then uh, warming up uh, yeah. they, they'll get um, uh, low on sugar, um, cold, um, and it's this t sort of time that you need to worry about it. Um, yeah. Night's closing in, not much food. Is it cat food that you give them? Yes. It is. <laughs> so you often, it used to be bread and milk, didn't it? Years uh, and years ago, I can remember bread and milk was the thing that you were supposed to give to possibly them. Possibly for heard. reviving, yeah. yeah. Uh, warm it up. Um, um, yeah, a bit of sugar maybe if it's really flat, a sugary water or sugary milk. And uh, um, But yeah, as, as foods go, they are carnivores. Um, they're, they're predominantly insects or um, slugs as their main diet. Uh, they, I think... In a, in a normal garden, uh, an adult hedgehog will go around and consume up to sort of 200 slugs a diet. So wow, do a fantastic quite a job. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. every garden really does actually need a hedgehog. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, so this is your first time on the television here today at Felixstowe TV, yes. am I right? That's right, yeah. But we can find you elsewhere in Felixstowe regularly. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Morag and uh, myself, we do a uh, radio show every Wednesday between 6 and 7 o'clock. Um, it's called Animal Matters and we talk about um, any aspect of animals really. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, during November, people can come and donate money in each of your buckets. That's right. Um, and they can listen to you each Wednesday evening between 6 and 7. Yes, it's a, it's a great opportunity to share animal facts, um, ways of caring for animals. Um, we have guests on the show uh, ranging from, um, well, we had Nettie Trigg on talking about hedgehogs and we had uh, Mark Bowman who was at the spa talking yeah, about his yeah. worldwide adventures talking about beluga whales. So it's a, um, so it's, yeah, it's a, a, a lovely opportunity to um, share with the community just as uh, um, Felix Day TV does. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for coming on today, Jamie. I hope we see more of you in the future you. on the TV as well as the radio. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can do. <laughs> thank you for tuning in again and we'll see you tomorrow.